I have Patrick Donahue here, and he is the founder and CEO of Paradigm Life. Um, so Patrick, why don't you kind of tell everyone what it is that you do and what does Paradigm Life do? Uh, okay, sounds uh, sounds good, Gina. It's good uh, good to be good to be on. Excited for uh, the conversation. Uh, so, what do, what do I do? Well, I I, I started off being uh, kind of a financial financial advisor, and through probably a lot of dumb luck, uh, just uh, got to the point where the business grew quite a bit. We have about sixty five people that uh, that are here, um, and I'm I'm doing my best to run the show. And uh, you've been in the corporate world and you, know, you get to this point in maturity of a company where, you know, it's uh, some it transitioning, you know, from, you know, adolescence to a, adulthood or, or maybe from infancy into adolescence. Uh, you know, there's, it's, uh, it's been really fun. So last couple of years, you know, I've uh, been able to develop a, you know, a, a team and a culture and an office uh, that I love, I love being at uh, probably too much because I'm, I'm here uh, all the time. But you know, it's one of those one of those things where I love what I do. I love my life, um, and you know, I get to talk to a lot of uh, cool people. So I would say, you know, if you were to frame what uh, Paradigm Life does, uh, we, in essence, are the traditional financial advisor. Now, today you have traditional financial or you have typical financial planning, right? Which really is a phenomenon that started in the nineteen uh, late nineteen seventies with ERISA uh, and some legislation during the eighties, and then the advent uh, of the four hundred one k, which became you know, essentially the non-risk uh, pension plan uh, that, you know, obviously pensions had tons of risk because it put a big burden on, on companies. And uh, so the 401k came in and, and Wall Street kind of took over. And today, for the most part, people are, you know, essentially set up on these tax deferred accounts. Uh, and uh, they're mostly mutual funds and securities that, you know, definitely, definitely do well for uh, the financial institution. But, you know, even during these like big boom, uh, five to 10 year cycles, which we're right in the middle of right now, or maybe at the end, who knows, right? It, it's, uh, it puts more risk onto, you know, the individual that's investing as opposed to the actual institution. So the, the traditional financial uh, advisor uh, really used savings vehicles um, as, a, as a foundation, but, that, but then the idea behind, you know, financial planning or financial advice then was not retirement. I think retirement is one of those, you know, those, we kind of consider it a, you know, an F, F word or, or, or a four letter word in a sense, uh, because, you know, we, we don't believe that retirement uh, should be the goal. Our goal is uh, financial freedom, right? And, and the pursuit of that as opposed to, you know, this end date when you'll stop producing, which I would say is uh, retirement. So, you know, we're, we're a completely web-based company. We've worked with uh, uh, over 6,000 people, Canada, US, all 50 states, um, some people out of the country as, as well. And uh, it's, it's awesome because, you know, I grew up being really introverted, not liking to, you know, talk to people and uh, just, you know, perfectly content just being alone. Uh, but, you know, I'm in a business where I get to meet so many people and it's been one of the most rewarding experiences of, uh, of my life. Uh, and I've been able to bring, you know, a team together and provide services uh, to individuals virtually, you know, through web conference, video conference. Uh, to to help empower them to take control of their uh, financial life in uh, many different uh, many different capacities, but I would say our our primary uh, is to help people with cash management, uh, which uh, right now is uh, very evident because you have trillions of dollars of credit card debt out there and trillions of dollars of uh, student loan debt, mortgage debt, car loan debt, and so and but you have people spending money. Uh, on credit cards and debt. And so you have a, a big, you know, big opportunity uh, there to help individuals really take control of their debt situation as well as their saving. Uh, and, but we also work with a lot of high net worth people. There's so many different, as you know, advanced strategies uh, that benefit people, uh, benefit people tax wise. Uh, it also puts uh, more control and less restriction than, you know, most, most typical investments. Uh, so all in all, I would say if you were to sum it up, you know, we are just, uh, we're the traditional financial advisor, uh, and we're the opposite of a financial planner, put it that way. <laughs> no. That, that was, that was great. And the reason I really wanted to get you on this, um, program is that you're one of the rare financial advisors that actually knows a lot of different products, um, or vehicles to achieve an objective versus just 
you know, let's just say selling a security or a mutual fund. And I think that's where um, a lot of the people that are listeners of this show could benefit from what you have to offer. And in particular, this kind of um, infinite banking idea, um, because we all know that that is some uh, one of the methods that one can build significant wealth. And can you explain just a little bit about that product? Because I think it's ingenious. Sure. So I, I would say the first thing is, you know, we, we have this uh, kind of societal uh, belief, this collective belief that debt is bad. Um, but yet, our, if, if you really understand economics, which unfortunately most people don't, uh, our entire society is based on debt. Um, and whether it's you know, the, the bond market or fractional reserve banking, uh, which is our entire banking system, not, not, just, the, not just the US, but the, you know, the international, uh, international banking system and you know, most emerging car- countries. In fact, all countries really are on the same, sta- you know, same type of standard uh, where banks do not have to keep uh, 100% of the reserves on deposit. They're able to uh, lend out uh, the majority of what you put on deposit. And it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's an, intriguing, you know, an intriguing thing, but it's, it's very uh, interesting when you study this just kind of dichotomy um, or paradox of, you know, we're being told to get out of debt, but yet our entire, you know, economy and society is based on, on debt. And I'm not going to, to details there. Um, but the, the idea behind banking uh, is, you know, essentially we have a financial product that is our foundation. It's where we store cash reserves. Uh, it acts as what we call an opportunity fund. Uh, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, it is, you know, really the uh, the, the original location of where people saved. Uh, and it's a specific type of insurance policy. Uh, and it's a policy where you own uh, the insurance company and are paid the subsequent dividend as opposed to a dividend being paid to other owners. You actually own part of the company. Uh, and then they also give you a line of credit against it. And so the whole infinite banking is not my intellectual property. Uh, it was developed a number of years ago. Uh, but you know, we, we essentially teach how to save inside of these vehicles, establish your reserve. Everything above your reserve is an opportunity fund. And we teach how to use the, uh, a guaranteed line of credit, a private line of credit uh, to acquire investments uh, or to make, uh, make purchases that you would have otherwise used debt to acquire. So it's just one of those things where I would say, you know, it's hard for people to wrap their mind around it. But if you put it in the context of what people do, it's as if you were to go into a bank, just your traditional credit union, and they gave you, you know, four to 6% uh, tax-free return. And you have all, you know, you're able to accumulate a lot of money. I mean, imagine what if a bank came out and said, hey, we're going to give you 4% tax-free, like everybody would withdraw their money from every other bank and put it there, right? And so imagine that existed. Plus, the bank said, listen, we will guarantee you a line of credit against that for yeah. between four, four and five percent. Yeah. Right. Now you're gonna have the whole country, you know, gravitating toward that bank, right? That's able to give uh, you know, that type of return, which I would say are traditional returns, uh, but also offer you a line of credit to uh to use. But it's not any like any line of credit. It's uh, it's guaranteed, it's private, it doesn't show up on your credit report. Uh, and it, you have it from day one. So it's one of those, you know, it's an instrument that I would say is the ultimate savings vehicle, but it is that, and it has to meet certain criteria from my philosophical point of view uh, to qualify as, as savings. Uh, you have a lot of these kind of crazy insurance policies out there right now that act more like investments than anything else, uh, which we do not recommend uh, because our investment philosophy is very similar to yours right? For where you have so much opportunity in uh, investment property, even for like, you know, your, your middle class, like bread and, and butter, mom and pop. I mean, just one, one to two properties over the course of 30 years trumps anything that a 401k would do yeah. right? in, in a traditional sense. And uh, so we, we advocate, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of that for a, a specific type of investor uh, or individual um, sometimes even individuals that have never invested before because you have, you know, really cool technology that's out there right now that allows uh, people to get in and has a, a turnkey operation. Uh, you get in, all you have to do is obtain finance, down payment, uh, and then you have ca- uh, cash flow and the properties managed. You don't have to deal with any tenant issues. 
uh, eviction issues, uh, and, and so forth. So it's really cool to see how that world has, has developed. But I know that you've had some guests on before that specialize in those, in those areas. So that's something that we advocate. And in order to you know, capitalize or take advantage of that opportunity, as opposed to a down payment coming out of cash, we keep our cash and keep our opportunity fund in this specific type of insurance vehicle. And when those opportunities do present themselves, you essentially go borrow money from the insurance company uh, and you put it as a down payment and then you get traditional financing for the other part. Uh, and then you essentially treat that the same way as you would treat any other loan and pay it back over the course of time. But the beauty is not only do you have the real estate that's growing, you also have your account that is growing. No, no, thank you so much for that. And yes, I am like a, a huge advocate of getting rich with debt. You know, that's one of the um, kind of legs of the financial freedom formula. The other is reducing taxes and both of them combine, you buy and build assets and then you're financially free with the assets that you bought and built. Let me ask you this, Patrick. One other thing that I've noticed is that very few people have gotten rich with debt. Um, and money's been free for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it makes me really concerned because now debt is not as free as it once was, and it may actually rise even to be more expensive. We don't know how expensive. Have you seen that um, you know, phenomenon yourself within just you know, your walks of life as a financial advisor? I mean, more than, more than you would think. And it's everywhere. And, oh man, I can go off on so many different, different examples, but that's the, that's the thing, Gina, and that you, you really look at our banking system and how much influence they have over society. You got to remember that, you know, the, the Fed has essentially produced on, you know, the availability of capital for banks in the, in the trillions, right? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's massive. And just to even like visualize a trillion, most people are very shocked. Uh, but this, this isn't necessarily money that's in circulation. So if you really look at what they're trying to um, either uh, curb or uh, to influence uh, in a positive way is, uh, is inflation, right? Growth. And so that's where they're able to, as one of their levers, uh, be able to give banks credit. But at the same time, you know, banks, you know, they, uh, they don't just offer that credit freely. They're the ones that have restrictions, right? And and there's some, sometimes the most asinine restrictions that exist, right? And I've, you know, I, there's, I won't, I'll give you a perfect example. I have a, you know, guy uh, that I worked with really early on, probably 2009, uh, 2010, and he had like millions of dollars in the bank. And, and he couldn't get the bank to give him a loan, right, for like $400,000 to buy an apartment building. Right. So it's one of those, it's just, you know, the, the, it doesn't make any sense these, these days, but I do, I do give credit to, you know, some of the things that Fannie Mae is trying to do, loosening their guidelines, um, you know, they're being very innovative. Uh, I think it's because, you know, of uh, some of the, the leadership there. Uh, but at the same time, it's like debt, you know, like you said, it, it, isn't, uh, it isn't coming uh, freely. It's very difficult to, uh, to obtain. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have control over some things and you don't have control over, uh, over others. Uh, but, you know, I would say that understanding debt and the reason why people really get into a lot of trouble is because they don't have the education around how to use it. They're using it for consumptive purposes, not for purposes of uh, production. So that's, and that's where I would really make the distinguishment. It has nothing to do with the debt itself. Debt is like this inert thing that doesn't, you know, it doesn't like get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm going to go ruin somebody's life today. But that's how people look at it, right? It's crazy. Yeah. It's really the use of it that screws everything up. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I won't say more than that. I can give you a bunch of more examples, but I would say, you know, debt could be your worst enemy, but it can be, uh, your best friend financially. Uh, but that all depends on you. Yeah. And so you and I probably, um, have the same respect for, um, a gentleman that, um, Ed Griffin and the creature from Jekyll Island book and understanding that money is debt. And I think that's where people kind of get it a little bit confused that, it is something more than debt that used to be the case before Nixon took us off the gold standard, right? So it's, it's nothing more than debt. <laughs> That's all money is. But at the same time, you know, I, was, I spoke at a conference a few weeks ago and, and Ron Paul was the, he was the, uh, one of the keynotes. 
And, you know, I got the opportunity to have a good, good conversation with him. And, you know, it's, it's from a philosophical standpoint. And we had a cool conversation about the use of debt to acquire assets. Um, and with the economics of it, he completely agreed and understood. But from a philosophical standpoint, right, and this is very similar to, uh, to Ed, uh, which is, you know, you, you look at the power associated with what central banks can do. And that power should not be in their hands, right? It should be in the free market's hands, but yet they've done it. And, you know, there are uh, good consequences that, that come from it, but there's also a lot of unintended consequences that, you know, have, have manifested. So in the end, I mean, you, you really have a philosophical standpoint, but you also have a, a practical one. But I look at a business owner, a real estate investor, you know, it's one of those things where it can, you know, put your financial life on a completely new track uh, if you under understand how to use it properly. Yeah, no, I would agree. I even, um, t I, I spoke at Freedom Fest last year. I usually speak there every year. And um, one of the actual observations I have is that the middle class we all know is becoming extinct. And so one way to counteract that for me is to use debt in order to buy and build assets. Um, because either you're going to become, if there's three of one thing, if one goes away, then you pick from the other two, right? And if you don't want to be um, extinct, then you will either fall into the middle class without the use of debt. <laughs> yeah, and this is where, you know, I have a strong opinion here because, I mean, it's a, the middle class is a huge, huge population. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's highly underserved by, by the financial industry mm -hmm. uh, because they're just, you know, given a once a, once a year, you know, we're going to do well this year and our mutual funds are going to, you know, average 20 to 25 percent and you're all going to retire millions, right? And yeah. so I would still class, it's underserved in a, few, in a few regards. Number one, because they're the ones that are in the most risk because they're told to invest in a market they don't have control over that is fueled by debt, but then they're told to get out of consumer debt, uh, right. both of which are uh, not very probable or, or feasible, um, put them in a bad uh, situation. So one of the things that we you know, we've gravitated toward as, you know, part of a, a financial strategy, a wealth strategy, right, is the, is the understanding that wealth is, is I would say, uh, you know, the extrinsic wealth, your assets, your money, your currency, your gold, whatever of physical value is secondary to uh, the primary source of wealth. And I think the middle class, you know, they're really seeking for the, these nuggets, but I would say, you know, it's even more valuable for higher net worth people that are maybe stuck in a very highly paid executive role. Uh, and, and so it's really this identification that there is uh, a whole other set of assets and liabilities, uh, which are you. And, I, and it's very it's hard for people to, to understand this, but um, I would say, you know, Gina, you're a perfect example. You received training in the corporate world. You received um, ways in which you manage things. You create systems. You have reporting structures. You understand organization at a very high level. Okay, those are assets. That's your experience and ability to do that is not taught in school, right? I wish I learned it in school because I've been trying to figure that game out for like two years now and it's, it's difficult. But yet if you can get to the point where you understand that structure, man, the, the consulting you can do, the freelancing you can do, the ability to create value for other businesses is, is profound. Um, so, and I look at, you know, really uh, those that are in the middle class and we all can establish more and more assets, whether it's training to sell, training to speak, training to manage, uh, learning um, you know, how to do marketing, uh, learning really how to figure out ways in which you can enhance the value you provide to your employer, which is based on building the asset column uh, on this side, which is the, more of the human side. Yep. And, and that's where, you know, accumulating that and accumulate that over time puts you in the position to be financially free a lot sooner than you think, because yeah, you can acquire property, you can build assets, but it's, it's difficult to accumulate a lot in the middle class. Okay. However, you can establish skills and really start to seek for opportunities in which you can provide uh, value outside of your nine to five employment and eventually get to the point where that can replace half of your income, a quarter, three quarters, whatever. But that's where I really look at, um, you know, what people are striving for. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it has been, has been sold to us as retirement, but I think all people internally, innately are driven by being free. Uh, and that's doing, contributing, providing value to others, but not, you know, with the crack of a, a manager whip, 
uh, but more from, you know, the, uh, the, they control the circumstances. They do it on their terms, not on somebody else's. And I really think that if people took on that mindset uh, or paradigm, right, they're going to be like looking at what they do and they're like, man, I'm valuable. I'm paid. Like I'm, I get paid right now. So that means I have value. I'm going to go figure out ways to, to get, you know, to get more assets to provide even more value. And if your employer's paying you, I guarantee, right, there are so many different venues and platforms opening up to provide your services on a freelance contract basis if you just know where to, to look. No, that, that's, that's so important. And um, a lot of people think that just getting out of the rat race is, is the achievement, but that's just, uh, you know, that's just the beginning, right? <laughs> It is. Yeah. And that's, we were, we were talking before, you know, I was, I spoke at this conference a few weeks ago and, you know, it just kind of occurred to me to, to ask the question or present the, the scenario uh, because a lot of people in there, you know, uh, like, the, uh, like Robert Kiyosaki read his books, played cash flow 101, the board game. I'm sure you've spoken about that before. And so I asked the question, I said, what's the, you know, what's the purpose of, what's the purpose of the game? Like, what are you supposed to do? And everybody, you know, almost unanimous, unanimously answered to get out of the rat race. Yep. And that was my point, which is, you know, no, the game doesn't end when you get out of the rat race, right? Uh, that's when life begins, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the idea is you get into the fast track and you, you know, one of the ways in which you win is to land on your dream. And I think, you know, Kiyosaki doesn't uh, talk about that uh, often enough, uh, but that is really where I think people are seeking. They're seeking to cont make contributions uh, based on who they are. And because that's where people, I think, find meaning in the way in which they're able to provide value to other people during their you know, human, human experience. Uh, but I think it hurts people that, because once they do get into retirement, like it's like they're, they're off and they're, and they're not providing value, they're taking. And I think that mentality is very destructive and, and could lead to a miserable retirement and probably an early, you know, uh, early exit or, or graduation. I, I would uh, completely agree with you. And just a personal story, I think I was sharing this earlier, is that, you know, a few years ago when I did achieve that getting out of the rat race goal, I'm like, okay, now what, right? And then you really need to think about what that dream is and make sure that you visualize it and, and begin living towards that. So you're right on point, Patrick, as always, and I knew you would be, and thank you for for sharing that. So let me ask this. Um, do you have, let's just say, any opinion on, on tax reform? And, you know, that's kind of new. And a lot of my listeners or subscribers are going from the left side and moving over to the right side of the quadrant. And I don't know if you've kind of had a some epiphanies from, from your client base um, as far as their journey or are they liking it or just liking it, I know you're not a tax guy, but from a financial advisor perspective. Well, it's one of those, yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I definitely subscribe to, you know, Tom, Tom Wheelwright's uh, philosophy, right? Where, you know, these, these laws, like they're not written by lawmakers. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're written by special interest groups, like all of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, if you read through, I don't know. There's some crazy stuff that's in, you know, in, in the new bill uh, about, you know, some certain alcohol and, you know, certain crops that get these, you know, these exclusive whatever benefits, you know, it, these are all special interest groups, right? Lo lobbying, right? So I think it's, I don't know, I think it's going to uh, do the country well. Obviously, it was nowhere near what it was uh, going to be, which I think would have been really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, I look at, you know, really the code is to um, tell you where to put your money uh, to get a lot of benefits. And, you know, I would say, and I always say draft off of the momentum of wealthy individuals, right? Wealthy individuals, right, have figured out a way to, um, you know, use the system and the code to their advantage. Uh, and so there's lots of different, you know, there's even in the insurance world, there's captive insurance, uh, there's actually, you know, cool strategies around captive reinsurance, which, um, you know, takes a lot of the expense out of it. Uh, but you also, you know, you have being a, a professional real estate investor that's still, you know, it's still there. Uh, I think developers are going to get, you know, uh, real estate developers are going to get a lot of benefit. So if you're an accredited investor participating in syndications, I think that's going to, especially if you get all the benefits passed to, to you based on the ownership uh, split, like you're going to get a lot of benefits uh, from, from that. Uh, but I would say, you know, in, in the end, 
you know, there, there definitely has to be some new moves made. Uh, a lot of people have set up some estate planning structures mm -hmm. uh, that uh, didn't necessarily need to do that because now, you know, the, uh, uh, the lifetime exemption is doubled, <laughs> which is it just insane. Uh, but there's, you know, I, I definitely, you know, look at uh, the primary things that, uh, you know, that the tax code is going to, to do, which is mainly for corporations. Uh, I think that's evident just based on some of the things that are moving in here. I think that, you know, if, uh, you know, if, if companies start to spend more money here, you're going to have that velocity effect, uh, which, you know, for, for better or for worse was the intention. Uh, and uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. But I would say in that velocity, you're going to have more money being spent. And, uh, and that's just, you know, money for an entrepreneur to, uh, you know, to provide their goods and services. And so that's, again, going to this idea of taking control of the human side of the financial statement figure out ways in which you can get that money. I mean, Gina, I think you were on the cruise with, with Robert a few years ago yeah. where he was like, you know, I, I, I think he said something as far as an affinity toward Ron Paul. Uh, but he, he disagreed with essentially ending the fed, which was a, a battle that probably would never be won. Yeah. It was to be the fed. Right. And what he meant by be the fed is print your own money. Now you're not going to, you know, print your own money. What he meant was to go out and figure out ways to make more money. Right. right to go out and provide more value and make more money, right. and uh, and so I I think you know from you know a there's tons of benefits now. I don't have a ton of things I depreciate, right? But you have 100 percent depreciation. I mean, you have um, you know some ways in which you can structure management companies and so forth, which uh, can benefit you if you're a business a business owner. Uh, I think the captive insurance strategy is a pretty fascinating strategy because uh, that's that I think the cap is at like one one and a half million or 1 1.2 or 1.3 million. But anyway, there's, you know, there's lots of different strategies out there that, that came about from it, but you definitely want, you know, a competent uh, advisor to help you navigate those, those waters. And I know that you, um, you know, refer often to Tom Wheelwright. That's who um, I believe is one of the most competent people out there. So definitely uh, listening to him, being on his uh, email list, his newsletter, et cetera, uh, or just type in Tom Wheelwright, Tom Wheelwright into iTunes. You're going to find a million podcasts with him on there and you'll definitely get some insight because Tom loves to share. He shares everything that he does, which is, you know, really cool. And uh, I think, you know, he definitely has uh, his uh, head on straight when it comes to, you know, providing that tax advice is going to benefit pretty much everyone. But yeah, moving out of California is a good plan. <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving out of, you know, high income tax states, right, where you, you know, have more than a million dollar mortgage and, you know, you're deducting more than $10,000 as a cap. So it's, it's crazy, Gina. I don't know. It's, it's just interesting to see you know, just how that, how those big laws come to fruition. And it's just like all sorts of like backroom deals and uh, it drives me crazy. Yeah. It's so funny you say that because it's like a lot of my um, our listeners obviously are from those high tax states yep. and I live in one and I, you know, that's why I learned how to use the tax code to my advantage. So I can continue to live here with pigs and not have to move out of the state. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. So listen, I'm, I'm going to actually send um, Tom Wilwright a bill for all of the advertising that we've given. <laughs> but I want to transition over into how can people find out more about Paradigm Life? Because I mm -hmm. probably only have another 60 seconds or so before you have to um, break away here. Boogie. Yeah, so there's, there's a million ways. Honestly, I wish there was only just a couple. Um, but um, yeah, if you just want to go to our website, paradigmlife.net, not .com. .com is Australian crystal company that we sell. Uh, so it's .net for right now. So paradigmlife.net. Uh, I also have a podcast, The Wealth Standard, which is on iTunes. Uh, and then I have a book. You know, I have a book coming out uh, probably in April. First one that I've – well, actually, the second one I've, I've – uh, ventured to to write, but the first one that's going to uh, actually come out, uh, the first one uh, that I tried to do, just didn't feel good good about it. So I feel really good about this one. So it'll be out probably you know end of March, beginning of April, uh, and then yeah, we have we have so much on our our site. Free, we have free courses about pretty much everything that we that we do. Uh, so you can just get on there and and uh, and have at it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Patrick, for just such a wealth of knowledge. And I do want to kind of ask maybe, you know, in the next six months or a year, if you could come back and share your wisdom and where are any other new service offerings that you might have that my um, audience can benefit from. It'd be my pleasure, Gina. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. 
Thank you. And tell everyone on the cruise this year, I said hello. I will miss them. I will be on the Forbes cruise, but I wish you guys um, lots of fun. And maybe I'll hook up with you in Puerto Rico. For, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. But I'd love to hear your experience there because that sounds like a, a pretty awesome cruise too to Australia. So I'm sure we can uh, circle back and compare notes. Yep, absolutely. We'll do, Patrick. Okay. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. I knew what I needed, so I went out and got it. Started stacking up assets, now I'm bringing in profits. I knew what I needed, so I went out and got it. Started stacking up assets, now I'm bringing in profits.